for this current study is to basically do an updated census to come up with an estimate of how many total tortoises are here. So we've been working kind of progressively from the east side of the island westward. So we're heading kind of to the northwest corner of the island. This is the east side. We drop you over on that east side. Just We're here on Egmont Key. Um, my name is Jeff Gessling. I'm a biology professor at Eckerd College, and we have four interns here. Um, the goal of this summer's research on Egmont Key through this internship is to assess the current population size of gopher tortoises on Egmont. We have a long-term marker capture study of these animals. It's been going since 1992. Um, and so we have a lot of background data. Then as we're all probably pretty familiar with last year, we had several big hurricanes make their way into Tampa Bay, one of which um, pretty much overswept the island. Um, has carried gopher tortoises off of Egmont Key all up the Pinellas County coast. And so our um, principal goal this year is both to add to the long-term mark recapture study that we've been maintaining for, um, for several decades, but also to really specifically figure out how many tortoises are left out here after that big hurricane event. First, we gotta find the tortoises. Uh, that hasn't been much of an issue for us so far. Uh, we were a bit worried when we first started the project. We were worried we weren't gonna find many tortoises after the hurricanes, but there seems to be plenty. Once we find them, we grab them, pick them up, bring them back to wherever we're working, uh, and then we identify them usually. They're either gonna be a new tortoise or a recapture from previous studies. Uh, and we identify them based on marks that are made on the shell along the, the edges of the carapace. Uh, and then along that area, we kind of have a code that allows us to identify them by number. If they don't have an identification yet, we give them a new identification and then we give every single tortoise uh, a pit tag, which allows us to identify them by a specific number as well. Okay. So we pit tag them, which is what we can do electronically to identify them, but we also like to file them. And back in like the 1990s, they used to drill them, but we file, it's a little bit easier. Um, and our numbering system works like this. So these are the thousands, hundreds, tens, and single digit. So this is 3,025, so we're gonna do 1,000 plus 2,000, and then 20, and to make five, four, and one. And then we get pictures of the, you know, the entire tortoise, which is really helpful for identifying them down the line, especially if like the marking that we do that uh, Jeff was talking about with the code uh, gets messed up. We can, if we have good pictures stored in a database, we can very easily figure out which tortoise is which. We're sampling their blood as well. So yeah. when we first grab the tortoises, we usually take a blood sample. Um, we want to get something that is significant enough to where we can separate the red blood cells from the plasma. And we'll actually use that for a project back in the lab. That's a project you're doing, right, Tristan? And that's on... Is that on their immune system? Yeah, we want to down the line once we have more blood to work with, because you know we're kind of just getting all the blood that we have right we can get right now. Uh, we want to look at the immune system that they have on this island compared to some of the gopher tortoises that live on mainland Florida and places like Boyd Hill, uh, where they're in more of a you know uh, a land terrestrial environment, not isolated on islands. So we really want to compare the blood between those tortoises down the time when we have more data. Something that stands out that's both the present and future is that we have this crew here really by really strong support from the Egmont Key Alliance. And so I would like to see a, a recurring internship of this nature. Again, with support, it takes a lot of partners to make, make projects like this happen. And so hopefully next year, we'll be able to come back and have a similar kind of sampling routine and really get back to a point where we have every year monitoring of these animals as well as other wildlife out here on Egmont Key. So um, we don't know exactly how long gopher tortoises live to be, but we know that they live to be pretty old, upwards of 100. And so again, it, it takes years and years of studying. So um, one vision is that the tortoises we mark and the tortoises that are already marked is that we get to really see them kind of go through this full life course so that it takes you know several years of studying of doing that. So one vision is that we're here to just provide um, that background research or you know that background database so that questions of habitat quality or population size or things that might impact either of those two things like hurricanes that could affect population size so that we really know you know what the normal benchmarks are to say is this an increase is this a decrease to the population that we're seeing egmont key is a really important study site as well uh, for one it's an island and so there's not very many other study sites where these critters are found on islands 
Uh, and two, it's currently safe from human development, and that's kind of the biggest threat to these species. Uh, this, this species is fading pretty quickly. So even though it seems like they're everywhere here, they might be everywhere in, in some other protected areas, um, they definitely face a lot of, especially here in Florida, a lot of threats from human development. And so this is a really important site to kind of be able to understand the ecology and understand the biology of these animals here. Uh, because it's not really like anything else in the world. This internship is possible because we have a lot of support. Um, Agmont Key Alliance has been a huge supporter of this, but also Hubbard's Marina has. Um, they provide our daily commute in and out. Um, and without that, I mean, again, this is an island. And so our access to this study site is our, is our biggest challenge, our biggest hurdle to get over, but also um, kind of our greatest resource has been Hubbard's Marina helping us with this. So, we're really grateful to them. We're grateful to Tara, to Dylan, um, and all of the great staff at Hubbard's that have been able to make this work for us. The Alliance is supporting our interns, but we also have some other um, local donors that are supporting some of the interns, as well as um, we have a, an internship set up on Eckerd College through the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. So again, this has really been a many hands make for light work kind, kind of project. So we're grateful to everybody that that's helped us. And when members of the public always want to know what can they do to help um, conservation projects like this, there's always two things that come to mind. The first is supporting these local advocacy groups, whether that's through Egmont Key Alliance or some other type of, um, again, environmental land advocacy group, and then also supporting the people that support us, which in this instance is pretty clearly Hubbard's Marine.